What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Why wait for Ice Cream Sandwich to debut on the Galaxy Nexus when you can get Ice Cream Sandwich right now in an unofficial build on your Nexus S? Let's go ahead and take a tour of the tasty dessert. All right, so I do want to preface by saying this is an unofficial build. This has not officially come to the Nexus S. This is a cooked ROM to show you what ice cream sandwich is going to look like when it ultimately comes to the Nexus S and a bit of a preview of what it's going to look like when it comes to the Galaxy Nexus. If you want some instructions on how to do this, link's going to be down below. Nice and simple to undo, it's just like putting any custom ROM on an Android device. So first let me show you that this is indeed running ice cream sandwich. We'll go ahead and jump into settings, there we go. We'll go scroll on down to about phone. And boom, Android 4.0. So again, jump home. There's a lot of stuff to show here in Ice Cream Sandwich. I'm gonna show some of the highlights on what you can expect uh, when it's gonna come to your Nexus S. First, Ice Cream Sandwich has support for non-physical buttons, non-capacitive buttons on the screen. However, a lot of older, really every older Android device prior to the Galaxy Nexus has real deal buttons down here. So those virtual buttons don't show up when you're on a device like the Nexus S here. You can still use these physical buttons. However, the menu button when you're on the home screen that used to pull up all kinds of options no longer works. It'll work in menu context when you're in applications and I'll show you in a minute, but it's not gonna do anything when you're in the home screen. Uh, and they're gonna have some new functionality with these buttons as well. So let's go ahead and talk about this new fangled launcher. You've got your Applications button in the middle, which I'll show you, and then you've got four icons on the side of it. You can drag different things in here if you'd like. It's nice and simple. Go ahead and pull that one out, drag Settings on in there. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. One cool thing, though, that we now have with Ice Cream Sandwich is, check it out, Landscape Orientation. Uh, this existed with some custom launchers in the past, Launcher Pro and a few others, uh, but now it's cooked right into Android. So that is a very, very welcome uh, addition here. Uh, you've got folders as well. So you've got one set up here for Google Apps. You can see what that looks like. It's very easy to create folders. You just take two icons and drag them together. So I'll take Camera, drag that on into People, and then suddenly I've got a folder. You can also have folders here in the launcher. So if I took Google Talk out and scroll over and I dragged in Google Apps. You could very easily have that right there. You could add contacts and such and have all your quick dials right there. Uh, it's a pretty handy feature. Nothing that didn't exist with third-party plugins, but it's always nice to have it baked right into Android. So some other new things here. You've got a new fangled dialer. It takes a bit of a time to load. Again, unofficial build. You also have some swiping gestures so I can swipe back and forth. I'm not gonna do it because there's some contact information there, but you can swipe back and forth to go from phone to recents and then to favorites. Uh, similar to Windows Phone 7. So go ahead and exit out of this. Let me show you the calendar because the calendar is nice and new here. And I'll also show you what the new application tray looks like. So go ahead and select it. We've got now native horizontal scrolling. And this is true throughout the whole operating system. There's a little bar at the bottom, it'll glow blue that'll show you where you are and how many screens you have to scroll through. Hopefully you can see that there. And I'll show you widgets in a few minutes. Let me go ahead and find calendar and show you some of the stuff that you can do uh, with the new calendar option, uh, which is pretty handy actually. So assuming I can find it somewhere in here, calendar, there it is. So when you add agenda items in here, you can now pinch to zoom and see what they are. A uh, pretty handy feature. Uh, this particular build of Android, everything seems to be working. Wireless works as does the browser. So here is the browser. You've got multi-touch here working quite as well, but the browser interface is a bit different. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a new icon. If you go ahead and select that, you can choose between mobile or desktop versions. And you also have a new tab launcher as well. If I go ahead and hit that, you have different tabs here that would show up and you go ahead and close it and exit right out uh, relatively easily here. So let me go ahead and show you widgets. That's one of my favorite features of Android. Uh, and they've really taken cues directly from Honeycomb, uh, the tablet operating system. So we'll go back to that same application tray and hit the button. And we'll jump on over to widgets. And this should look very familiar to anybody who's ever used Honeycomb. 
You've got a lot of choices here, and they're all pretty similar to what we've seen. If you want to select one, like let's say I want to put a contact dialer, I go ahead and select it. I can put it anywhere I'd like, let's say there, and I am good to go. So let's go ahead and jump home. Let's talk a bit more about these widgets. So let's say I've got a calendar one right here. If I long press it and then let go, I can resize. Welcome addition to Android, or at least the phone version of Android. You can make it teeny tiny, bigger, giant, whatever you'd like. Go ahead and go back. Uh, and as you move to select icons, you now get that 3D effect that you had with Honeycomb. So you can go ahead and scroll from left to right and it sort of frames the home screen. That's, uh, that's a bit handy. Uh, you also have, if we jump into settings, this new handy data usage icon. So go ahead and find that for you, data usage. And it's only going to reflect data that you've used uh, on, a, on mobile data. So Wi-Fi is not going to count. You go ahead and put caps, show how much you've used. So if you've got a cap plan, two gigs, whatever plan you're on, uh, you're not going to go over that. It's a really welcome feature uh, as well. Let's go ahead and hit home. We also have a new lock screen. Kind of neat. So I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like. Up doesn't do anything. You can swipe to unlock to the right, and that will unlock the phone or you can quick launch right into the camera. So I'll show you both of those real fast. Slide to unlock, and you're in the phone. Nothing giant there. But if I lock it and I jump into the camera, it will take me in a moment into the camera. And there you are. Uh, a bit of a retweet camera design. Let's go ahead and go back home. I've got some other new and subtle tweaks here. There's a lot of stuff that's missing I'll talk about uh, as well. If you go ahead and pull this down, notifications are going to be swipeable, so you can swipe them off to the right to get rid of them. I guess it's sort of handy. Uh, and some redone icons at the top as well uh, that sort of have that Roboto look to it, even though the Roboto font uh, is not currently found on this build. Um, if you want to multitask, for example, so I mentioned these buttons are going to have a bit of a new look and feel to it. So if you want to hit home, it's not going to do anything. It's going to take you right back to that screen, but that's about it. If you long press home, you get the new multitasking window here, which is really handy. So it looks similar to what we saw with Honeycomb. However, if you want to close an application, you just swipe it off to the right, and boom, it's closed. And that's a really welcome feature in Android. Uh, it adds another sort of layer of elegance, um, a bit of UI panaz, uh, and or pizzazz rather, and really makes it just nice and easy to use. Uh, it's been one of my favorite features here of this surprisingly stable, uh, very, very early build of Android. So let me go ahead and run and jump into an application again and show you again what these menu buttons are going to do. So again, this guy does nothing. Long pressing the home screen, you now only get the options for gallery, live uh, wallpapers, and wallpapers. Um, if you're using a device that's going to be made for ice cream sandwich, you're going to have a multitasking button. However, the typical button array on most Android phones don't have support for that, so you've got to long press to get to it. So let me go ahead and jump into, we'll go ahead and jump back into the browser. No network connection. So we'll go ahead and hit menu, and now you get menu options that are dependent on what application you are going to be in. So what's missing from this build? Well, we don't have the Roboto font. We don't have face detection. Uh, speech to text is here, but it's not as accurate as we'd like on the current build of Ice Cream Sandwich and on the Galaxy Nexus. It'll start translating the text as you speak. This one has a bit of a delay to it uh, as well. The menu button we mentioned have a bit of a contextual um, implications depending on what application you're in. Uh, and that's really about it. Uh, most of the other goodness found in Ice Cream Sandwich is here on this very early build on the Nexus S. If you have a Nexus S and you're feeling adventurous, you could try this. You could probably use this as your daily driver. Uh, relatively handy. Anyway guys, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo who's excited about Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, this makes me much, much, much more excited, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the official build for the Nexus S, which will be presumably coming sometime. And more importantly, I cannot wait to take a look at the Galaxy Nexus. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video.